It's wild, first of all, that it's 2017 and we have a packed house for a film that's now 60 years old. I mean, I think, don't you think that's a testament to the legacy and the art of your grandfather in a lot of ways? I think that's a big part of it. I also think that what is surviving in a lot of people's kind of zeitgeist still is the sort of style factor of him. And like, this is kind of, you know, pinnacle, ring ding ding, dabba dabba do, whatever the heck that is. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's, I think it's, it's something that people just have always kind of gravitated to towards in his oeuvre, if you will. <laughs> yes. Do you think, aside from the style of him, though, why do you think his music and his art and his film, why do you think, in general, this still holds up, especially for new generations? I think what you just said is something that I never, ever hear people say, by the way, is about the human side of this person. And I think the fact that that could come across to you is something that comes across to most people. And, and they just don't quite know how to articulate it as well as you do. But that's, I think, a big part of it. It's just kind of relating to, uh, you know, this human being who is larger than life, but also what I always hear is feel so familiar and intimate as a, as a person, you know, to, to, to people who didn't know. So I think the music part of it is sort of the, the vehicle through which all that stuff kind of comes, comes through for people. And he's cool. He's a cool actor to watch and stuff. Yeah. When, when you're making your own music now, how do you, what do you take away from him in, as an inspiration or an influence, if any? To try to be good. <laughs> um, yeah, I, 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 you know, working hard, pretty much. I mean, nobody's going to ever sound like that, but it, uh, people don't realize that he actually did work really hard to, like, he didn't just, like, wake up and go do a show without, like, vocalizing all day and taking care of his voice and practicing. And so that, right, it didn't just come naturally. No. <laughs> um, do you, do you know what were some of his favorite songs or films when you were growing up with him? Did he ever express to you? Of not of his. Oh, of his. Oh. Or of not he his. He wasn't his. like that. He, he wasn't. It's funny, a lot of times people are, are, have this idea that we like sat around the piano and sang my way. It <laughs> 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 wasn't quite like that. No, they didn't really listen to their own stuff and watch their own. I mean, like my mom would show me his movies and play his music and stuff, but he would never just say, hey, watch this thing that I did, you know, let's, let's check out how good I am. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I mean, other movies, he, would, he was a huge movie fan, so I think something like this he would be so excited, very excited about to, like, to know that he was part of the film festival and people are still watching the movies. He just loved the whole part of it. He loved movies, he loved didn't love making them that much. She would be like, okay, let's go, because it's not, I don't know if y'all know, but it's not the most quick process in the world. And he was not a patient sort of person. So that's where that whole one take thing comes from. It's not from singing. He never did something singing in one take. That's not what it is, it's <laughs> the movies. He'd be like, okay, let's shoot it and move on, because he is very, very boring making a movie. Right. He loved movies. He'd screen them at his house all the time, like get new movies that were coming out, and, like show them on his screen, so he loved movies right. all the time. Yeah. Um, one thing I always hear about your grandfather is that he was such a generous man, mm -hmm. that if you needed him, if you really needed him to be there for you, that he would do it, friend or family. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's something that he developed over the years, or it's just something that's always been part of who he was and your family in, in general? I think when you grow up the way he did, where he's an only child and, you know, spoiled by his mother, and but also not well off, I think it, all those things kind of combine to make you, to bring out a generous spirit. You know, he always wanted to have people around him and was, you know, loved to sort of show him a good time. He was also very solitary, which is something that people can't stand about. It's like, which is it? Is he solitary? Is he gregarious? Is he a jerk? Or is he really nice? Like, hey, he's a human. He's both. He's all of those things. Yeah. Right. So yeah, he, he, he always really liked just giving to his friends and his family and people who needed help all the time. But I think it's just 
innate and then kind of start in rooms that I would do, you know, when you can. Because then he had money to give to people, and, you know, he didn't want to grow up. So. Do you think growing up in the Great Depression definitely shaped the way he, he acted as a professional and treated his career and his family and people around him? I mean, his family was, uh, I don't know if you know this, but pretty, pretty out there with their beliefs and the way that they uh, uh, politically ran their lives and stuff. So he learned a lot about how to kind of be progressive in things and how to, how to make the most of the situation. Yeah. I'm always curious, what do you think you know, like today's performers can learn, especially those who are in the spotlight? Because obviously it's a different time in terms of the mainstream. But I feel like there's so much that younger artists and performers can learn from him. What do you think, some, what do you think someone can take away, like a new generation of performers and singers? Being super prepared and <laughs> like working really hard to make it look easy. Because he worked really, really hard to make that look easy. And just played all the time as often as he could and learned from his peers too. So never kind of stopping learning and never stopping working hard. That's pretty much it. I know that's boring. No, it's fine. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much it. In Long Island, you know, we have a huge Italian-American community and population. Um, you don't say. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think he was such a big deal at the time to be in a... Like, Aside from the fact that Italians were viewed so low on the totem pole in society by the time he was growing up, but I mean, what is it? What, what can we take away from the way he treated his career professionally? Like he didn't give in to all of the racism and, and derogatory statements that were thrown against him. It's a real paradox. I have to tell you, it's a real paradox for me because to me, it's it's just that, right? It's it's he was completely intolerant of racism in any form, bigotry in any form, uh, and all kinds of stuff associated with that. Uh, and yet, somehow he could, anyway, I won't get into that. <laughs> but uh, we'll so leave it you're it. like, No, no, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> no. Um, no, I just, uh, I think that uh, Italians who, who kind of like, you know, there's, and I'm saying this as, you know, I got a little bit, me too. Me too. Um, there's a little, not tribalism, but like we're a group and like we're, you know, this is our gang. It's anybody, right? It's anybody who's a part of a group. And so when they see somebody making it, it's like, oh, well, he can do it and he's like, he's our man, you know? It's, I guess it's as simple as that, I guess. I don't know. They, people get weird about this stuff. Did really you? good at it. They no, get so about it. No, you're right. I'll put it that way. It's a good way to put it. Yeah. Are we, do we want to take some questions from the audience? Sure. Do I get to pick them or do you pick them? You pick them. I pick, uh, that's, I'll, I'll that's the first one I saw. Can you relate to us one of the best memories that you have of him as you were growing up as a grandchild? Sure. Um, he taught me how to paint. You know, as a painter, a really good painter. Not just the geometric ones that everybody sees. Like He, he actually knew how to do figure painting proper landscape and stuff too. Um, I didn't carry that through. My sister, who was supposed to be here tonight, uh, had the replacement, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not Amanda, I'm sorry. It says, anyway. She's the artist and she, I think they mentioned the book. Were they talking about her book? Yeah, so she, she, she kind of took that moment of learning art from Greg Snodger and went with it. But I was there, it was a good, Fun thing in a little art studio where you could like go take out paint and play and stuff. That was always fun. Anyone else? Hello. I'm pointing at you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm from Brazil and I'm curious about the partnership that he had with Antonio Carlos Jobim. How that evolved? Oh, sure. So I just fandom, like mutual admiration society. Yeah. Um, he would do that often, like if he found some, uh, either a songwriter or someone in that he really admired, he'd just be like, I'm gonna work with that person someday, and you know, that always seemed to work out for him. I don't know why, it just did. Ha ha ha. I'm sorry, I'm hard of hearing, can you say that one more time? Did he have those teachers or teachers that 
teacher or teachers? How long did he have? Um, I think his teachers were, again, like his peers and also his family listened to opera all the time. So opera was always on in their house, you know, on their phonograph type device. And um, he, he just practiced learning how to sing from, from listening to opera. And throughout his career, sure, he'd have, I don't know names, but he definitely had people like help him out with, you know, the, the, the boring part of being a singer, like vocalizing and learning how to keep your voice in shape and how not to hurt your voice. And sure, definitely. There you go. That's what I mean, his peers. Tommy Dorsey was a peer, for sure. I'm sorry, Joey. I, why don't you tell me? It was Gene Kelly, wasn't it? It was Gene Kelly. Yes. All right. All right. Oh, Finish chewing your food. I can't hear you. It's a can't candy. Uh, how old were you when you passed away? And um, uh, besides um, in the, um, Sinatra Jr., uh, is there any other siblings that you have? Uh, she said, when, when, uh, how old was I when he died? I was 24. And are there any other siblings? There's my mom, Nancy, and there's Tina, and uh, my uncle Frank Jr. who passed away last year. I'm really sorry, but I can't hear a word you're saying. Can you put your hands like this? I said I would hesitate to follow somebody who said they did everything their way, especially if they were a politician. You would hesitate to follow anybody who said, oh, I know what you're talking about. Especially if they're a politician. I know what you're talking about. I agree. Yeah. Thanks. How about this person? I think I know what you're talking about. <laughs> if it's anti, I agree. <laughs> Train room. What did you think of that? Oh, that yeah. They had a um, a, like a on my grandfather's property. They had a little train caboose type thing. It was an actual caboose. Like they, I don't know how they got it there. It was like a caboose of a train in his yard. But that so there was right. There was that thing, and then there was this like shack little hut that had like all the trains, and you flip switches, and trains would run around because he loved trains. <laughs> yes. Uh, I guess a couple of things. Uh, I was fortunate to see your grandfather ten times in concert in the early 90s. And I got this he sense saw him ten times in the early 90s. Yeah, and I, um, I got the sense watching him that he never just walked through a song. He like never just he, walked through a song. What he, he, um, how do you describe it? He just enjoyed it. Like he really gave it his all. Really gave it his all. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, was people not hearing I'm repeating so other people can hear you. Uh, yes, that's correct, for sure. Yeah, yeah, so yes. that's, that's the sense I got. And then is there something, because he was larger than that, is there something that you know you can share with us that maybe most of us don't know that might be interesting for your grandpa? Um, sure. He, uh, well, most people don't seem to know his correct political leanings, but I won't get into that. <laughs> <laughs> Many people seem very ignorant of that. Anyway, but uh, besides that, um, he uh, really loved being by himself, except when he didn't. Like, he'd be up late with the people, and then he'd be like, okay, everybody, bye, see you later. And then he'd be by himself till noon. Didn't like having like random people around, only people he knew. Yeah. How about this that? gentleman over there in the blue. I'm sorry? How about this gentleman in the blue? In blue, okay. I guess I'm colorblind too, so. <laughs> Hoboken for the last 40 years, and 
I just have to tell you the amount. It was involved in Hoboken for the last 40 years. And the amount of affection and adoration that the, the town has for your grandfather is remarkable. Well. Yes, it really is. I lived there for six years. And yeah, for sure. Yeah, they love that guy. Go figure. How break into the business? What was his first lucky break? He was a singing waiter at a restaurant called the Rustic, Ca uh, Rustic Cabin mm -hmm. in uh, Fort Lee. Somebody saw him and said, hey, you got to come see this guy. He's really good. <laughs> yes. Oh, What's I should call him. What's your favorite experience with him growing up? My favorite experience? I mean, there's so many. Um, I really liked going on the road with him. That was really fun. Yeah, and he was, he was like, when he's out, he's like, when are we going home? And then when he'd be home, he'd be like, where are we going out? Do <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, you have any favorite uh, performance uh, live that you witnessed that you like the most? With? That's a great question. I, I saw him a lot, obviously. and But but I it was, for me, it became like it was the same show every night, which was kind of great to see. Like, he really, like, if you see it so many times in a row, it's like, okay, this is actual work, and like, this is a, this is a process, and this is a, this is, everything's thought out, nothing's random, you know? Um, but I really loved hearing songs like, it never entered my mind, and like, he'd have like a few that he would play all the time that, that you wouldn't think would be, I don't know, it was just interesting to hear that one in particular, and when he would sing, um, when he would sing, uh, I guess I'll hang my tears out to dry, those are probably the two that I loved the most when he would play. Have a genuine friendship with the other members of the Rat Pack? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, Sammy was always around. I didn't, Dean got kind of reclusive in his old age and he wasn't around that much. But Sammy was around all the time. Um, who else is in the Rat Pack? Billy Bishop? Yeah, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to him on the phone once, so I guess plenty. Or he was funny. <laughs> Peter Lynn? Yeah. He said that if he looked like Peter Lawford, he was, he was jealous of how Peter Lawford looked. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Oh, okay. oh sorry. I'm sorry. You sorry. I... No, you choose. Yes. What oh. was his favorite song he ever recorded? I don't know, man. <laughs> I wish I could ask him. What was your favorite? My favorite recording, recorded song? I'm singing the In the Wee Small Hours album now. That's like one of my shows that I do, and I have pretty much every song on that album. Let's say that. Let's say that album. Yes? Do you get nostalgic when you hear Nancy with the smiling face? Nancy with the smiling face, sure. I mean, sure. It's, it's, it's a weird, that's, that song has a weird story. Uh, it was actually written for, uh, who the hell's wife was it written for? But it was like Bessie or something. Somebody named Bessie with the laughing face, and then they're like, oh, they just had a baby. Let's make it about Nancy. So it wasn't actually written for her. They just switched the name. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. I know he had a big following of friends and always hung out. I'm just curious about his wife, your grandmother. What was life like for her? How did she cope with his stardom? I can point you to a very definitive source on that, which is an article I wrote for Vanity Fair magazine about two years ago, where I discussed this entire topic. It's very good. But you know, it's just hard, right? Your husband, it's hard. What was the issue so I could read it? You're not telling me that. It's from February, February of 2015. The one with the Hollywood people on the cover, <clears throat> whatever that was that year, with Tanning Tanning Chatham. One of yeah, one of those Chathams. I just want to say, it's so cool that your grandmother is still with us. Isn't she 100 years old? She is. It's something to keep And still just as big of a pain in the ass. As she is. No, I'm kidding. I'm kind of curious. What is it like having four generations now in your life all at once? Loud. <laughs> Uh-huh. And actually, your grandfather told me. Oh, word? Okay. Okay. They were 
Is that rainy day? Okay, that makes sense. And what? Yeah, that makes sense. Perfect sense. And you know something, I'm glad he told you that because I've always felt like that's why I have a kinship with him is because of the downer, the fat, the sad songs, sad songs. And, and also thought about friendship and affection and honesty and loyalty. Loyalty is a big thing. That's true. I will mention the guy's name, but I'll tell you in a second. <laughs> I went to the Waldorf Towers one night to meet my friend mm -hmm. to take him to visit his grandmother up in Connecticut. Okay. It's early 90s. When I got there, he said, I can't leave right now. Affectionately, he was called the old man, Mr. S, wants me to have dinner with him. Father went to the theater and we're alone. So I said, well, I guess I'll just you know, go back or hang around. No, 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 I told him you're here, come up. And we sat and had dinner with your grandfather. And this gentleman cooked for him. And the gentleman I'm talking about is my best friend in the world, Tony O. So he told me to say hello to you tonight. Oh, that's nice. And he also said something very special about you. That one night, you slipped a note under the door at the wall door, thanking him for taking care of such good care of your grandpa. True? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. It's a great New York story. Thank you. This woman in the back. OK. Um, the most doting person you can imagine, you know, not spoiling or anything, but just do time, spend time present, like not sitting there, but present, important. We just have time for one more question. Um, that person over there, with your hand raised? Oh, no, no, I'm just resting. You're just resting your hand. <laughs> Thank you for your honesty. <laughs> Anybody else? We really are in New York. <laughs> yes. Wait, I already called on you. I got one. I, I'll ask you a question since you saw my arm uh, Oh, man, you kind of stole someone's question. <laughs> I can't hear Do you. Do blue eyes run in your family? Um, I don't think any more than any other family. I mean, generally, it's kind of an honest question. But. Yeah, please, one more. Uh, this, this gentleman had a question yes. right here. Living in California, did he miss New York? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, neither did my grandmother. They all kind of moved out here and say that here and there. That's where I live. At the, where I'm from, too, at the same time. They're all like, this? Yeah, let's get out of here. <laughs> Never look back. Sorry. It might meet you out there, AJ. Yeah, sorry. I, I mean, he yours. loved being back. He had the same thing of me now, where I'm out here like once a month, and it's like, oh, this is so great. And then I get to go home. <laughs> I lived out here 15 years. I did my time. <laughs> okay. Okay, we want to thank AJ Lambert for coming here tonight. Thank you.